Hello again, Krishna and Aisha. Hi. Hi, Punita. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us today at Entrepreneur and speaking to us about MFN. Thanks for having us. We're super excited about this. <laughs> Absolutely. Same here because uh, this time it's a different story altogether, which we'll be sharing with our uh, viewers about a mother-daughter duo becoming entrepreneurs and uh, running a different kind of uh, entrepreneurial journey altogether. So if we go back in time, I mean, uh, Aisha, I remember reading in one of the stories that uh, you were pretty excited the way your kids shaped up uh, while learning martial arts. Was this the, I mean, uh, main idea behind starting MFN in India? Um, no, I can't say this was the main idea. Uh, but yes, I, I do give martial arts so much credit for the way my children have turned out. Uh, they've both been um, practicing martial arts since they were very, very tiny. Uh, I think the age of four, both of them. And uh, Tiger has made a niche for himself in the movie business, uh, which is very unique. And, uh, you know, coming out of a shadow that is so large, like his father's, and being able to carve his own identity in such a competitive uh, field, uh, I think it, it's uh, full kudos to him and the discipline uh, that has been instilled in him since he was a child due to martial arts. Uh, the same thing for my daughter. Uh, you know, both of them have got a very competitive streak, uh, thanks to this. Uh, nice. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all about fair play. It's all about honor and integrity. And uh, these are um, qualities that uh, any parent would want their children to imbibe. So I think uh, martial arts has been greatly instrumental in shaping my children. And uh, so first, I would like to give thanks uh, to, to this amazing sport. Um, where, whereas when it comes to MFN, actually, uh, it, it's a rather different journey. Uh, mm -hmm. A few years ago, my son was part of a, an MMA league, actually. He was a co-owner of one of the teams. Yeah. And uh, as part of his obligations, he was supposed to attend uh, um, certain events. Uh, and it so happened that one weekend he was shooting and he couldn't uh, free himself up uh, to attend. So he requested my daughter and myself to uh, go in his place. Okay. And... Um, I was a little uh, hesitant initially and I was like, oh God, I've got to go all the way to Delhi for this tiger and I really don't have the time, but chalo, let me just, you know, I'll go for it since, mm -hmm. you know, it's an obligation. And uh, I ended up watching the event and uh, I was hooked for life. Uh, I cannot even explain uh, the kind of um, uh, euphoria that uh, took over uh, and the kind of excitement to watch uh, an MMA fight live. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's something that you cannot describe in words. And I just turned to my daughter at that point and I said, uh, you know, this is something that we should be doing, Krishna. And mm -hmm. she was like, mom, are you serious? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it, you know. And uh, we came back to Bombay and the two of us got working on this project immediately, literally immediately. And uh, shortly after we decided... Um, that we wanted to get into this, uh, we launched MFN, and mm -hmm. this was March 2019. Mm -hmm. to March 2019, okay. and uh, here we are. Uh, you know, um, almost on the verge of MFN 14, and uh, it's been a fantastic journey. A fantastic journey, and I wouldn't have. Um, I wouldn't have. You know, uh, not uh, ha hesitated about doing this all over again. Okay, wonderful. But uh, do you think the entrepreneurial streak is more? Because in this case, you gave the idea and asked Krishna if she wants to join as a co-founder in this journey. I think I've always been somebody who uh, who doesn't like to do the expected. And mm -hmm. I like doing things differently, sometimes to my detriment. But uh, so be it, you know. Uh, I think all of us in this family, uh, we are not the the tried and tested uh, kind of uh, people and we all do things tend to do things differently in our own way you know so um i don't think uh i think my my husband in his own way path breaking my son in his own way is path breaking my daughter in her own way is path breaking and uh, 
uh, yes, I am too. Be it my the kind of movies I chose to make, and now <laughs> MFN, which is literally my third baby, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, I I got the first uh, jhatka to do this uh, <laughs> and involve my daughter, but she's been there with me every step of the way. And I don't think she ever expected her mother to uh, get involved in something like this. But when yeah. she realized I was serious, you know, she was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And she's been like my uh, my backbone on this project uh, from day one. Okay, wonderful. Krishna would like to hear your side of the story. What got you hooked to it? Yeah, for me, you know, I've I've been uh, following the sport for as far back as I can remember. Um, I have immense respect for the athletes of the sport, especially. That's really what kind of um pulled me towards this direction you know because i mean i've grown up playing sports all my life and i have you know mad respect for athletes across the board but what these guys and girls do is is very special you know it it takes a very unique individual to do what they do or what they can do um and you know that's really what drew me in uh it's it's really a blessing and very motivating to be so close to these guys and girls, you know, because I mean, honestly, I can speak for myself, but when I kind of took up the sport, not professionally, of course, but, you know, mm -hmm. just for fitness purposes, um, training at the gym, um, it, it really instilled a sense of discipline and sort of, you know, focus that I didn't necessarily have growing up uh, mm -hmm. throughout my teenage years. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'll you know forever be grateful for finding it and and being exposed to it and and being exposed in such close proximities. Um, I look at it as a blessing and and it's you know definitely the best decision of my life. So I mean, once you uh, thought about the idea that both of you together want to build it, I mean, uh, what all it involved? I mean, working as a team and then developing the business all together in Indian market. Well, absolutely, and to be honest, it's it's been quite a challenge. Uh, because when we when we got into this, the MMA community in India was very tiny, actually, and uh, there was no structure to uh, to you know an MMA promotion. There was um, training, coaches, all of that stuff. Uh, yes, there were some excellent coaches, but uh, they were relatively unknown, so to speak. And uh, when we got into the business, uh, the first challenge we had was uh, you know. Uh, educating people what MMA was. A lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, who especially sponsors that we approached uh, to uh, come on board with our shows and everything, um, were, they, they didn't know the difference between MMA and WWE and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, challenge was to educate them about MMA, the sport per se. Sure. And then a lot of people, you know, uh, were a little skeptical and they were like, uh, it's, you know, it's combat sport. Uh, people won't enjoy it. And India is such a peace loving nation. And will they like something that's so, you know, um, uh, hands on and so, uh, you know, one man against the other in a cage, mm -hmm. one woman against the other in a cage? Will that appeal, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that was the initial challenge, of course. But uh, we stuck through it and um and we believed in our, and we said let's do it the way we have dreamt it should be and uh, let's see how it goes from there and uh touch wood from the very first show uh we did our our first event at the dome here in mumbai uh mm -hmm. it's a beautiful stadium uh in mumbai and uh we had about two thousand people who attended the show and mostly all invites, you know, and uh, mostly there were people from the film industry who came out to support us and, you know, see what these crazy shroffs are up to and all of that <laughs> stuff. And uh, trust me, by the end of the night, each one of those people left hardcore fans of MMA. Mm -hmm. It was something they had never witnessed before. And, you know, also us coming from a Bollywood background, uh, a production background, uh, we we put up the show in a very beautiful, grand manner, you know, mm -hmm. and every show after that, we have just raised the bar higher. We have done things. We have, you know, uh, fine tuned the shows as we go along. And uh, trust me, we've, we've uh, built a reputation for ourselves, not only in the country, but globally as well, so that we now have other promoters looking at us, uh, other coaches uh, from around the world saying, you know, you're 
promotion looks amazing. We We've heard such amazing things about the way you look after the fighters, uh, all of this. So we want our fighters to come there to India uh, or wherever it is that you have the shows and uh, fight on the MFN platform. Mm -hmm. So that's a great, great um, uh, positive that has come out of this. And apart from that, I think we can very, uh, in all humility, say that uh, MFN has been responsible for resurrecting the sport of MMA in, yeah. in our country. And, um, you know, whereas earlier fighters were paid $200 a fight uh, and even less, uh, now uh, fighters are very well paid at MFN. And in fact, the, 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 the fighters who go up all the way to the main event are paid uh, $10,000 and above, mm -hmm. uh, which is great, a great uh, fee. Uh, so much so that now it is actually being able to be called a profession, you know. So we have fighters who have now uh, happily given up their uh, regular day jobs and who are now training full time to be able to compete at MFN on oh. that level, at that skill level. Mm -hmm. uh, we have coaches who are. Uh, very, very uh, talented, who are now uh, coming out in social media, who have uh, built these amazing camps, who have built these amazing teams as well. And um, there are MMA gyms flourishing all over the country now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, every nook and corner literally has an MMA gym uh, growing. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been amazing to see this transformation of the sport in the country and uh, of the athletes, um, most importantly. Mm -hmm. And I think now they all sort of have a direction, you know. Um, mm. MM, MFN is sort of their pathway. Um, it's it's a huge achievement for MFN, you know, the fact that two of our fighters uh, are now signed to the UFC, which is, of course, you know, the largest organization in the world yes. uh, currently in the sport. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the trajectory that MFN specifically has shown is, you know, unheard of. It's unmatched, I believe. So what kind of investment it was? Uh, I mean, uh, it has taken both of you to get started with MFN. And now after, say, 13 editions, what kind of uh, total investment which has gone into it? And now is it profitable for both of you? Well, uh, currently, uh, it's a no loss, no profit venture. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say we are very blessed that we haven't faced losses per se. Because, uh, you know, I guess the advantage of having, um, you know, our family uh, so so front and center in the entertainment business has facilitated, uh, you know, obtaining sponsorships for, mm -hmm. for the events. So uh, we don't have any investment. We don't have any investors on board. We purely operate on sponsorships from event to event. Okay. And it's a break even each time. Uh, of course, there are a couple of times when there's a little bit of a shortfall uh, in which case you know my son very kindly pitches in and uh, helps us to to cover up the shortfall uh, but uh, you know it it was we did not want to sell out at a very early stage before we were established before we had made a name for ourselves before people really realized the the beauty of the sport the excitement of the sport so now uh, after 13 shows uh, we are finally uh, at a stage where uh, we are live on Disney Hotstar, mm -hmm. which is something that happened uh, very, very uh, uh, lucratively for us. Uh, we are also uh, now in the process of talking to potential investors, funds, etc., uh, who are uh, interested now in buying a stake of the company. Uh, but the difference is this time it will be on our terms and, uh, you know, uh, not the other way around. Yeah. So, which is very, very gratifying. In such a short time, to come to this situation uh, is extremely gratifying. And going forward, I mean, uh, is there anything planned in terms of the way you think about growing the business or you think any co further collaborations or extending the brand further in India? Are there any plans set? I think the next step would probably be broadcast beyond a uh, television broadcast okay. uh, of course you know we're we're live on disney hotstar but i think what we've been discussing is uh television broadcast to be the next step to then level up and then i think that's sort of our pathway to you know having people look at the sport in a more serious sense investors really you know considering the sport in a more serious 
sense. Mm. Um, and making just, you know, raising sponsorship money that much easier. Sure. And besides that, you use the word collaboration. And yeah. uh, I, I do believe that that's the mantra you know, uh, going forward, it's all about collaborations. The days of, you know, the uh, mom and pop shop are done, uh, you know, unless you tie up with uh, with like minded people, um, the the potential for growth is very, very limited. So uh, now I think the awareness around MFN has built to such a level that uh, we are able to now consider potential collaborations, which will then help us uh you know increase the frequency of our shows um once you increase the frequency of the shows then it becomes much more attractive for a broadcaster to come on board as krishna rightly said because yeah. that's definitely the next level and then we would look at broadcast not only in india but international broadcast as well so that means uh you know doing uh deals with um individual uh broadcasters uh in all the uh in all the countries and all the territories uh, globally where uh, you know we have fighters uh, that that come on board mfn uh, where there is a big fan base for these fighters and where there's a very big fan base for mma uh, as a sport per se sure and, and i mean we're not you know we're not far off we've already um we're kind of already there halfway with some of our guys having you know a, a name for themselves uh, through the promotion, have built, you know, their profiles. Um, so specific places are already on board as broadcast partners, uh, depending on if their fighter from their country is on that card. So, I mean, we're we're well on our way over there. To understand it better in terms of uh, working as a team, how is the role divided between the two of you? I mean, well, both of us are great list makers to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we always say, you know, women, I feel like women are better at, just nitpicking, right? Like the finer details of things. So, I mean, having two women in charge, what's better than that? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I also, I mean, I always joke, you know, mom and I, we're, we're the perfect team, uh, I believe, because, you know, we're, it's basically good cop, bad cop. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very much <laughs> okay playing bad cop. Um, you know, mom, mom as a person is a little more emotional and attached. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I'm able to sort of detach and see it as the profession that it is. That's true. So as co-founders, are the duties assigned that this would be mom's role and this would be your role? I think we pretty much share all responsibilities. And uh, when when there's a lot to follow through on, then at that point of time, yeah, we do split uh, split our uh, lists so to speak and uh, you know i handle my share krishna handles her share but at the end of the day uh, we report back to each other uh, about any progress about any uh, lacune uh, about anything um, any and every detail because like she rightly said we're very detail oriented people uh, i think that's that's our nature uh, mm -hmm. for sure so uh, we get into the tiniest of details on each aspect of MFN. So, um, and both of us are, uh, you know, we joke about it. Uh, what is that thing? Uh, fear of missing out. So, FOMO. FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we're literally overseeing every single thing, you know? So, I mean, I think that's what's helped us grow in such a short amount of time is because we're so heavily involved, you know? Mm -hmm. We do have a great team, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we're we're hands on with every single thing along the way. And it's it's our baby, you know. So I I mean, I definitely believe no one can do the job better than the two of us for it. And how big is your team right now? We're a show a little tight team, but great team. No one, no one is on the clock. No one is checking their time. Oh, we've come into the office at nine and we are leaving at five. Nothing of that. Each of them are passionate about MFN and they all uh, work with their heart so currently we're, uh, we're in the office itself uh, we have it including Krishna and myself we're a team of seven and uh, well outside we we do have people who are on a uh, work for hire basis yeah. and uh, we call upon them uh, as and when required for each show but it's just you know a handful of people that honestly share the same vision and the same end goal 
So, but would you also like to share uh, the kind of investment you have made so far in this? Well, as I said, um, we personally have not invested our uh, funds as such, uh, mm-hmm. barring a little bit here and there, obviously. Uh, the the majority of funds has been raised from sponsorships. Uh, but just to give you an idea, an average show, uh, including production, fighters' fees, etc., would be in the region of three point. And five to four crores. And any learnings both of you had while working with each other? Well, I think we got to, uh, me as a mother, uh, I always, I mean, I used to. Uh, my children are grown up. They're both in their 30s now. But for me, they're still babies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think every mother thinks that. Yeah. So sometimes when I'm in the office and we have a meeting uh, and I hear Krishna, the way she conducts herself in a meeting, like I do a double take and I say, damn, is that my daughter? You know, she sounds so sophisticated and so um, so boss lady. And that makes me so proud. And then I realize, okay, you know, she's grown up and, you know, I need to, I need to let go of the strings a little bit more than I have. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm incredibly proud of her. I'm incredibly proud of my son. Uh, they're both wonderful children, wonderful human beings, ex- extremely hardworking. Uh, nobody takes advantage of who their dad is or anything of that sort. And, um, you know, that that makes me extremely proud for sure. Uh, um, I also realized that um, I need to give her much more credit than I have for her knowledge about the sport. Uh, I think that comes from her passion, which is long standing. And uh, I've learned a lot from her, actually about the sport you know I've always been pretty clear and I never I never get involved in anything I'm even just you know let's say 80 percent sure of that 20 percent will always you know hold me back and and make me believe that this isn't for me so anything that I kind of dwell into you know I I have to be a hundred percent with and all in um I'm a very competitive person so whatever it is that I choose to take up I need to be the best at you know and and that comes from knowledge primarily so yeah I mean both mom and I you know definitely have our own strengths um but together I believe we've definitely been the best team for it so, sure, but anything you learned about your mom, which you hadn't known earlier, I mean, in business? <laughs> hmm. Actually, a tough question. My, you know, my mom's always been, um, she runs the show, whether it's, you know, for the four of us at home mm-hmm. um, or now at MFN, you know, um, my brother, my father and I, we, I don't think the three of us could function without her. She's really that binding force in the family you know so she's just on top of everything for all of us and I think uh she's I'm so happy to you know let her be captain of the ship and (laughs) I'm very happy being co-pilot let's say um you know and just supporting whenever whenever I can and wherever I need to um but yeah I mean she's she's a great leader she's definitely one of my role models and and an inspiration you know I was telling her earlier a couple of months ago I don't know if you remember but if I could be half the lady she is by the time I'm her age I mean that's a huge win for me. wow oh yeah <laughs> that's great for you to hear yeah she does it all she's so she's very strong and you know firm when it comes to her business yet Mm -hmm. gracious and very kind to everybody and that's one thing I really learned from her I think you know just you never know what anyone's what someone's going through so kindness never hurts Mm, that's true yeah I heard that in the podcast both of you did (laughs) (laughs) and in future do you think there would be any more businesses you both of you would like to get into uh, MFN is growing. It needs all our attention right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apart from MFN, we also own a chain of uh, MMA gyms, uh, Pan India. MMA okay. and fitness. Yes, MMA and fitness. And we are in the process of also constructing um, an MMA a fight camp, uh, which will be of you know on an international level with uh, fighters and coaches from India and across the globe uh, coming in to train, to teach, to learn. Uh, so we've got 
a hands full with these three aspects of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also now just started what we call the MFN Contenders, which is a three day tournament that happens once a year. Uh, there's uh, a conversation we are having that we might increase this to two times a year because of the incredible response we've been getting. So this is a tournament that is open to amateur fighters from across the country. They come and compete for three days. And at the end of the three days, uh, the guys who the guys and girls, because we've had a great turnout of girls as well, mm -hmm. uh, who actually win their fights uh, across these uh, three days. Uh, we give them MFN um, contracts to turn professional uh, on the MFN big stage. Okay. So it's become it's become quite an interesting uh, business now because uh, it's it's literally we've created a complete ecosystem. So you start from the amateur fighters who fight at contenders, mm -hmm. then. Uh, from there they come onto the MFN uh, stage where they fight at the big shows. Then once a fighter retires from from a professional fighting, he has the option to be a trainer at any of the MMA Matrix gyms, Pan India, with a very comfortable salary, a share in the PT. So you know he's he's not just out of uh, of business once he gives up fighting yeah. and uh, and now what was missing was um, having this incredible fight camp angle added so that our professional fighters have a place where they can train comfortably and uh, prepare for their fights uh, whether they're fighting at MFN or whether they're fighting at the UFC or wherever you know and also we're within the camp you know we're also opening it opening it to foreign coaches, foreign fighters to come in, sort of like an exchange program. So mm -hmm. it exposes mm -hmm. our Indian athletes to a whole new level, you know, and when they move on from MFN or the Indian circuit and, and go to that international level, they're prepared, you know, mm -hmm. and they're not just thrown in blindly, you know, they're, they're fully prepared. They're ready. They know, they know the level that's out there. They know how to, they know that they can stand up to that level. And once they're 100% ready, being exposed to all of that over here, you know, in the comfort of the camp that we're creating, uh, they'll be ready for the next level. And what's the number of gym which you own in India right now? Well, currently uh, we have 13 gyms. Uh, these are franchise uh, gyms okay. and uh, we monitor them extremely uh, closely. And uh, we have them... Uh, yeah, except for, except for the South, where we are currently in talks to open two gyms. Uh, they're mostly in the North and um, like Punjab and uh, and a lot of uh, three of them in Maharashtra, in fact. And uh, we have our mothership, which is in Mumbai. And uh, we are in, on the uh, verge of opening a larger gym now in Mumbai because, I mean, touch wood, uh, nothing to complain about. Uh, the current gym is doing very well, but we are finding it a little short on space. Okay, so we're moving to a bigger, bigger spot now. Yeah, you further franchise the gym brand, or it's an international master franchise which you own in India. We own the franchise, okay. the master franchise, and it's our brand technically. Okay, uh, it's entirely our brand. It's okay. owned by my son, my daughter, and myself, uh, with the blessings of my husband, of course, and. Um, we own the brand and we franchise it out uh, to, to various parties. And then we have a team that oversees the quality control of the, the space itself. And of course, most importantly, uh, the training aspect in each of these branches. And this is honestly something that, that is specifically, you know, very exciting for me because my whole game is fitness, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I personally uh, visit whenever I can, um, you know, kind of just do a check, make sure quality is kept up. Uh, everyone's happy. Members are happy. Uh, our partners are happy. Things are running smoothly, you know. So I, I try to do that whenever I can, when it's convenient and kind of, you know, do a bunch at the same time. Um, and then, of course, whenever we launch a new one, I, I will make it a point to always be there. Before we close it, uh when you were looking for uh, women fighters to join um, the MFN, did they find it hard to uh, reach out to you, or was it a better uh, was it better to reach out because both of you, as women founders, were there? I mean, uh, any concerns which were there, they could come to you anytime. 
what was your experience like uh, you want to answer that one i mean we we both yeah. can uh personally i feel that uh, krishna and i are extremely approachable so any mfn fighter uh, knows that we're just like a phone call away a message away mm-hmm. uh, and in the initial days um we had a lot of fighters reaching out uh, to the office mm-hmm. because obviously i mean they were not uh, they were not so close to us at that point of time and uh they were wary about whether they could actually approach us etc but i think um it, maybe in the beginning they might have found, found it a little bit difficult to reach out but i think once they 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 met us and we've had interactions with all these fighters uh they've realized that you know um and i i like to say this actually uh i want all indian fighters to realize that mfn is a home for them so uh they can come to us with any issues they have good bad whatever you know and we are there to uh to try and guide them at the end of the day these are all uh, adults they have their own families to to support them and um advise them but uh but krishna and i are always here for all our fighters and i think they've all realized that now so that's that's a good thing what is the range of uh, women versus men fighters <laughs> currently in mfn um that's the ratio is a little uh unbalanced at the moment you know mm-hmm. um there are many talented girls out there but i think uh the experience in the women fighters still lacks a little as compared to the men okay. uh, they haven't been doing it as long mm-hmm. um but you know slowly yet surely that's building as well uh you know through msn contenders our amateur circuit uh we've been introduced to multiple talented uh female fighters um and i believe you know the the more shows we're able to put out the more we're going to see them and the more you know um experience that they have the more that they're exposed to fight fighting uh the more opportunity that they get now with all our facilities uh plus of course the platform um i i, I only think it's going to grow and when both of you started in the indian market as women founders and that too in a different uh, segment altogether which is mma so uh, was there any uh, i mean incidents wherein you felt okay uh, people were not very forthcoming at that time you know it's i uh, personally i never felt any such thing mm-hmm. i believe you know it's it's a very male dominant industry mm-hmm. um already and then on top of that number one for me specifically you know being a female number two being uh either the same age or younger than a lot of these guys in the industry mm-hmm. um it was initially a little you know hard to be taken seriously um i did i mean no one was forthcoming with that but i you know you you sense you, it you sense it you feel mm-hmm. an energy you you kind of mm-hmm. get it yeah. um but i think you know as time has gone by and all these years have passed and they've seen um my knowledge not just my passion but my knowledge you know of it as well of the sport and uh the way we've been able to build matrix um i think that's that's definitely changed now you know and and i mean the the product speaks for itself so i think the less i say about it the better <laughs> okay yeah. yeah as and my son very rightly says he says you know let's we keep quiet and let our work speak for ourselves you know yeah that's definitely something i i've taken yeah. from him as well um you know just work hard and and let your work speak for you at the end mm-hmm. of the day that's what you got to show sure great on that note we conclude this conversation thank you so much for talking to us today and sharing your entrepreneurial journey thank you for it thank you. you you came up with some very interesting questions thank you thank you pleasure having both of you thank you thank, thank you so much bye have a good day